<laughs> God, that's simple and stupid, but there it is. <laughs> kind of describes uh, each of us. <laughs> Dennis, my friend, happy hour. <laughs> yeah. is... Hey. Uh-oh. Hey. Is Somebody's your car, car going alarm off? is going off. That's my daughter's. Oh, she's on her own. There, she got it. All right, well. So, uh, hey, man, it's uh, New January here with the Vengeance. We finished Christmas finally here in Spain. Oh, finally, what'd you have, four of them? Put the tree away. Yeah, there's four seven Christmases. Wow. Like when they say on the 12th day of Christmas, like here it's, they, really they mean, mean it. it. <laughs> the Magi finally showed up and, and Joseph looks at him and says, so what the fuck, did you get lost? Right, yeah. He's, so. it's, it was five days ago. You were supposed to be here for the birth. And you call yourself midwives? What did you bring? Oh, God. Not there, more that stinking incense. I hate that stuff. And yeah, myrrh, really, I don't that, even know what it is. I got the pile of last myrrh you brought me. I never used any of it. I'll take the gold, though. Pass the gold on over. But, That's good, but just but the, next time, just the gold. Like, why are we, like, producing this atmosphere of, he was incensed. He was frankincensed, Joe. He thought it was, he, he looked at the gold. He thought it was a myrrh. Gosh. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We got all that over with. And, and then my daughter with two things over the weekend the good and the bad my son got his first vaccine he's eight years old and was oh, able yeah. to get vaccinated now did he, did and he get sick? no he had the same symptoms that i did which was like oh it's hard to sleep on that side that night that's about it yeah but but the current protocol is that because he has had covid he only needs a single dose of the vaccine which pleased uh, him that he doesn't need to come back in three weeks and get more sure. uh, that and is that is the good news. Uh, the bad news is that on the same day, my daughter requested to go to a sleepover party with some of her friends and got the COVID. So, uh, yeah. So now we are uh, house divided. Uh, uh, where, again? Again. Is she with you in the studio? No. She has to be on her own because there's she's the only one that's positive, right? So where is she? Well, so we've, in the mornings... Not and, on the street again, man. Not in the garage. Look. With that old wet sleep bag. God. I taught her how and to build. Cooler, I taught her how to build a fire cooler. in the old drum under the bridge, and I think she's going to be okay. There's fish in the river. So did you? Yeah. Did you follow through on your plan to make sure that a couple of her friends got it too, so they could stay with her? And you and they did get it. Like uh, the two friends that were at the sleepover have it. And who brought it in the room? Who knows? Clear. Yeah. So one so, of the people that has it was either your daughter, or the other two girls, whoever is sick. Well, that's not necessarily true, is it? There could be someone not sick at all who brought it in three susceptible girls got the COVID. So That's whatever it. it's, and don't you want to know so you can punish the girl? I, we're preparing the, the pyre to burn her on already. But, I know the girl um, needs to stay with your daughter in the garage with the burning barrel and the wet sleeping bag. It's under the bridge. There's, there's no garage. Yeah. yeah. So the garage is nearby. <laughs> I know exactly where it is. Okay. When you go out from under the bridge, you talk about half a block, turn right. And there's the garage. That's true. That's true. But we didn't give her the garage door opener. So it's, oh. it's oops, too bad. Yeah. And the, so that's that and so we're you know when the rest of us are are home like she has to be away and we're wearing masks indoors which now we say that's where you're supposed to wear masks but in our own homes and it, it's complicated and it it's potentially got me scared because i have purchased airplane tickets to come and see you later this month so yeah yeah i, I need to really maintain my COVID negativity until then. Right. And so did you, I, what I did before the trip is I planned ahead for a quick test at the local quick stop. And the day, about the day I leave, I get in the car and go, and I don't go back into the house. The next place I stop is in my brother's house. It's going to be quite the road trip. I can understand why you're concerned. Yeah. And, and it, it's weird though, that the protocols have changed just in the last week since our last episode, because as you may recall, when a classmate of hers was positive, they forced everyone in the class to get a PCR test, which delayed our trip to the Canary Islands by one day. And But now, if you think you're positive and you go and take an antigen test that you just buy at the pharmacy, and you then call the government and say, hey, I just was positive on an antigen test, they... To be honest, I'm ignorant about the difference between antigen tests and whatever PCR stands for, but it's before they would force you to come and take a PCR, but now they had her come in and take another antigen test, but administered by a nurse and the process done properly, which happened this morning. And we got the positive results within 15 minutes via text. How does she feel? 
Okay. He's, I think her friends are suffering more than she is. She claims to have a sore throat and a little bit of a, you don't believe a, her of a bellyache. You don't believe her at all. The use of the word claims is a, yeah. a little, a little descriptive as she might. I don't know. Suspicious parent. She I don't know. There's allegedly. allegedly. So we have this, this really cool thermometer that I bought recently that it's one of these ones that takes your temperature by like you hover it over your forehead, but it's connected to the Wi-Fi and to an app and stuff. And so anytime someone takes a measurement, you can then on the device, choose your name from a list of people in the household to say, this was me and save this reading. And I get notifications on my phone every time a reading is taken and who had what temperature or whatever. But lately I've been getting a bunch of ones that go unassigned that are like slightly lower than fever. And then I get one that's slightly above fever and then she's not it to herself. So it's one of these, the old trick of taking the, the thermometer and holding it over the lamp or something to show that uh-huh. show your mom that you're sick or whatever. I think there's a little bit of that going on, but she does she's not hundred percent for sure. And uh, those are two typical symptoms of particularly Omicron version of the shit stomach. And what was the first one? Sore throat. Yeah. Sore throat. And she's, she sounds a little raspy sometimes. But the data showing that Omicron, unlike the other strains, almost always begins with a sore throat and has much more of a tendency for night sweats. So that's one, a couple of ways to think about which version is going yeah, on. So I'm not concerned with her being vaccinated and generally a healthy yeah. person. I don't think there's going to be any trouble, but, but like, I know a guy who did some work on our house that uh, was double vaccinated and runs marathons and shit. And he got coronavirus and ended up in the hospital on uh, getting oxygen for really, it was only like, it was only like 12 hours, but like he felt the need to be hospitalized. So it doesn't really matter how amazingly strong. No, and no. It's just it, matters like, how, it, it matters about a whole bunch of other stuff that we barely understand. How many books you read in the last year, things like that. Which books were they? Right. Kind of thing. So I'm curious, have you been following the, the Biden's work at all, uh, particularly and specifically his speech on the anniversary of January 6th, where he was the most forthright damnation of Donald Trump with ever naming him. And to make certain that it was heard loud and clear, he said he's not just a former president, he is a former defeated president. Boom. And it went much further than the loser, loser, loser thing that that Ari Melber did that was hilarious. It's worth a clip, in fact, because he he Ari Melbert never lets himself go like this, where he acts like sometimes he's somewhat neutral. But in this case, he had so much fun calling Trump a loser that he did it like in two sentences. He did it 37 times. It was and he had a little wry smile on his face and you just knew he was fucking enjoying it. But anyway, the question was about Biden in the speech. Did you check it all at all? I have not. Please tell me about it. <laughs> well, you sound a little you memorized. That question. You me- just a few things. Four score and one is one is that Joe does best delivering stuff from the gut, and so whenever you've got the emotion of anger coupled with the emotion of uh, or the thought of the, the thinking part of illogic. He is great because he just looks at you and he means it as much as anybody ever could. He says, this doesn't make any sense. Thank God he was saved by that. But it was hailed as uh, timely by many who and others, though, who said it's about time. And the people that were smarter about that timeliness, in my view, said, no, it was perfectly timed. He spent a year doing everything he could. To, to meet his promises of increased vaccination and getting the economy back and trying to work bipartisan. And the time is up and he's tired of being gentle and being more behind the scenes. He's coming out. He went to Atlanta. He absolutely was outraged at the lack of support for legislation that, in fact, is being held up by his own party and could not find any Republican senators to, to, to support even debating it, even debating the fundamental right uh, to vote. So cockamamie, and here's the thing, it won't work. This nation is woke. It won't work. Nomination, go ahead. Election, you're going to get fucking beat even worse than you did this past time. You might even get more votes. We'll get more. Okay. We'll get more. Yeah, I'm just concerned. I haven't been following the day-to-day stuff, but I have been listening to the general uh, sort of terrifying path that maybe we just don't trust 
elections anymore as a people and the how it's if mike pence hadn't gone if he had listened to all the people that were asking him to to not certify the election we would have just been up shit creek as far as violence and trans, peaceful transfer of power and stuff and well we, we would have been in, in, in not a totally dissimilar holding pattern as we were in gore versus bush when and all of his yes, friends hanging i recall that yes. out down in florida there was a delay and the supreme court stepped in in an immediacy and in a relatively miraculously short period of time made decisions the same thing would happen here and in this case the the outcome of the supreme court undoubtedly would be what 37 other lower courts and the supreme court had decided which was in fact the election was fair so right, the yes, but, would but tell. in 2000 both parties were willing to accept the decision of the supreme court of the, that's a different matter and, and because now of, i don't know that people would be willing to accept a decision well, or results in which they lost. You've just offered a couple of different scenarios. One has to do with the people on the ground and the other has to do with the party. Right. And in fact, the Republican party with a Supreme court decision would in fact leave Trump behind on this because it's a rule of law. They might argue the case, but at the end of the day, there's no countersuit. And with the choice of insurrection, that would be happening, continuing the violence, which would be happening, more to your point about would the people accept it, Supreme Court does their thing and the cities are burning. Mm -hmm. The cities are burning and the Republican Party has to make a statement and what their statement is, it's the rule of law. And then the people it, escalate the violence and it becomes as close to a civil war as the country's been. But the fact is that the size of the violent mobs pales in comparison to the size of the people that aren't in the violent mobs. And given the law enforcement footprint in this country, yep. th that would not result in a civil war. It would result in the country's largest military and paramilitary engagement in the history of our country. And it would be quelled. And in and the cities, it, like it, we would be under so we would be under we would be law. under military martial law. Yes, but like uh, the way coups work is, if you can control the military, then you win. It so isn't going to happen. Whatever whatever no. side the military chooses is the winner. There's no indication in in anything that has been investigated or okay. is known Great. to indicate that. So this is my point, and I'm glad you said that because my point is this: <laughs> do to that fact that they do support the rule of law, it would be quelled at a cost, which is unimaginable. But in this country, if you came here during martial law, you'd say, yeah, that's not very far from where it was where I live just to enforce the, the COVID law. COVID curfew, yeah. <laughs> right. right. It was military. I'm, I'm used to seeing military. And people all over the world would say, get used to it, you soft-bellied Americans. We've been under some type of military occupation in our urban centers for the past 40 years, 50 years, 60 years. And yeah. my point is it went home. We think that only the customers of Starbucks should be the ones carrying uh, assault rifles, not, not the guards. Like, I remember when, I remember there was a very distinct shock to me whenever I traveled from England to Spain and I was flying into the Basque country, which was going through uh, a bit of a terrorist activity scenario during the time. And I remember coming from England where famously the cops aren't, the cops don't have firearms and then arriving to, to the Basque country airport where there were like people with berets and assault rifles standing there watching us get off the plane. And that shock of a uh, level of quote unquote security that, that is right. Like, that's yes. People in other countries would think that whatever our whatever the US martial law looks would be fairly normal. But I don't know. There was that Denzel Washington movie where like they declared martial law in New York City or something and there were like tanks in the streets and shit. Um, right. that, it's we're not far. I believe that it will happen you know, certainly in in my lifetime that we'll see some type of military occupation in at least some of the urban centers, at least some of the places, because I believe that the forces that are planning that and designing that are formidable. They have an amazing uh, success story under their belt, something that no other group of domestic terrorists can claim in the history of our country. And they're proven, proven capable, and their leader shows no signs of abating. The Republican nomination is his if he wants it. 
And given the choice that he has, which is either between being the president of the country or being a prisoner in one of its in federal prisons, he has no choice but to run. This is a decision he has yeah, to Yeah, how's that coming along? The whole- It takes forever. As soon as, soon as he steps down, he's going to be arrested. The specter of being arrested, but the, the trumpeters and the, the women and men with the clanging cymbals who were parading around that stuff, the, those that pull the credibility of the entire left- Mm -hmm. with their insane misunderstanding of the pace of the legal system. It, it's too bad that, that you're right about what was said. And there was no way on God's green earth that anybody would have been ready for any type of indictment delivered in such short order, given the painstaking expectations of proof, the burden of proof that are required in the justice system. There's no, and it continues. We don't have any doubt that there are people that are putting this shit together against him. I personally don't have any doubt that at some point he will be indicted if he doesn't die first. Right. But I suspect that it's one of those five, six, eight, 10 year stories that one of the things we can hope for is that the people around the current Supreme Court who are showing a leaning quite clearly to fealty to him mm -hmm. are dead. That's how long it could take that they're dead. These are young <laughs> Supreme Court jurists. That's how long it could take. Might, might not be my lifetime, depending on how long I live. Yeah, okay, well. What if I dropped it over dead right now? Would that be weird or what? Great. Oh, I got a story to tell you about That'd be my hilarious. death. About my death, yeah, it's funny. I'll tell you in a minute. Okay, uh, no, I, I was more or less done with this. It, yeah, the, I feel so grateful that we got through one of his terms, more or less, I don't know. There was no fucking nukes going off or anything, but, but the, and he prevented war by being the crazy fuck that you didn't want to even breathe a word of anything to, because you thought he might just nuke you. But anyway, yeah, that, I don't know. The specter, as you said before, of another Trump presidency is a uh, pretty scary. And the Democrats well, seem like they are in total disarray and just as they always fucking are to just total. let the, let the Republicans not total. have not total. <sighs> yeah. Not, they, the question, not I'm, politics. I'm, I'm glad you raised that point. Here's the thing then that, that that we can discuss at a later time. Here's the thing. The question isn't about the Trump presidency. The question is about what happens during the midterm elections and what happens in terms of the control of the House and control of the Senate when the Senate is 50-50 with only a tie splitting vote by the vice president and the House lost so many seats in the last election that they're down to a slim margin. And it's possible and well within the, the, the framework of, of prediction, as Mitt Romney said yesterday on the House and the Senate floor, that both the House and the Senate could go Republican. That means that Biden's presidency is basically over other than lame duck status for two more years. Nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. Nothing can happen. And, and we twiddle our thumbs. All right, here we are. January 2022, strangely enough. Who's your prediction for the Democratic nominee in 2024? Kamala Harris. And that disappoints you? Yes. If it if it wasn't her, which is she's the obvious, because that's the way it works where the VP is the obvious nominee. But if it wasn't her, who would it be? Schumer. Schumer. Every senator looks in the mirror and sees a president. <clears throat> yeah, you mentioned that the other day, and I've been thinking about it ever since. Who, who's the Democratic leader that, that just died? Oh, Harry Reid. Harry Reid, yeah. He was always there fighting the good fight. But And the other potential would be... But Schumer uh, is me, also like a thousand years old. No, he's not a thousand years old. He's probably in his late 60s. Oh, okay. But the new standards, right? I mean, you're talking to a man that's pushing 70, so easy does it on the whatever the fuck, wherever you were going with... No, but remember how... Just vital fun. Barack seemed. It was like this new young whippersnapper just coming up. Like, I, I you get behind seriously. someone like that. And, and so you're actually making a point that helps to define a couple of things. One is why I sound, in, in fact, would be disappointed with Kamala Harris because of her lack of substance and experience. And Schumer has absolutely no shortage of both. Barack had no shortage of intellect and was shy of experience. And in my estimation, did a terrible job doing the managerial work of the president of the United States. The executive branch was a mess for a long fucking time under Barack Obama. It was a mess. Yeah, it, it, that like the whole system, democracy itself- uh, Is a mess. It, 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 it's like the incentives are broken because it incentivizes you to elect the most charismatic person regardless of their managerial skills. 
and like w- democracy would be great to elect a head of state a someone like like queen elizabeth who goes out uh, for important ceremonies and is there and says nice things and blah 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 because it's a popularity contest because it's a popularity contest and, but and then prime you'd, minister you'd be better off yeah with with someone that's knew how to be a project manager when it came to actually executing yes. executive power and but that's the system that we have and the most interesting person is although somehow Biden got elected the most interesting person is going to get uh, is going to get voted for it's the extraordinarily hypothetical question relative to who will be the nominee it's it, supported Dennis so think through your words carefully okay okay let me let me restart so the, the, the question about Kamala Harris as a nominee, actually, I answered, I answered incorrectly. Let me just say this. The odds that Joe Biden runs again are growing with every story about Kamala Harris. Ugh. The last of which, by the way, maybe you've seen this on your feed, is her incredibly stupid hiring of a new communications director, who, among other things, referred to the president of the United States as Sleepy Joe mm-hmm. publicly on a podcast, and donated money to Rand Paul's campaign. Uh And this is who she hires as her communications director. Why? Oh, because they need somebody to stay on message. This guy? What's his message? He can communicate to the enemy. The first two or three weeks he's been there, he's done nothing but communicate a defensive posture about the things that he's said and done in his past. And that somehow is going to create the feeling that Kamala Harris is really substantial. Oh my God. <sighs> you want to post an interview of her, find the one where the, and I've mentioned this before, where Lester Holt says to her, no, you haven't gone to the wall. Why are you saying that you've gone to the wall? Right. And she laughs and she says, I haven't been to Europe either. I did not post that last time. And it's likely that I won't post it again this time, but <laughs> but I might. I just keep talking. Just- future yeah. Eric editing this. Keep saying it. You know. So let's get one other topic I wanted to uh, talk to you about. But let me just quickly put a button. Okay. Do you have any plans to visit the border? I, I'm here in Guatemala today. I, at some point, you know, I, I, we are going to the border. We've been to the border. So you, this whole this whole this whole thing about the border, we've been to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I mean, I don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. I'm not discounting the importance of the border. Well, I, I mentioned it because I, even I, I know Republicans have certainly come at you on this, but Democratic Congressman Cuellar, as a border district, has said to the, you and the president, "Come, you need, I to, care you need about, to see this." Listen, I care about what's happening at the border. Get off the ship. What What have you been watching? How have you been uh, entertaining yourself? So, besides the you know usual. I watched a movie that is has been going around and being talked about a lot called Don't Look Up. Uh huh. Heard I've of this? Way too many. I've read way too many words about this. I haven't the, seen. It. I know the, all about. The, it. the critics really hate it. Yes, and Aaron Sorkin is it's not running Aaron, for cover. It's not Aaron Sorkin. Uh, it's Adam McKay who is the director. Aaron Sorkin is a writer. He wrote the screenplay. Okay, they're both super liberal. Yeah, well, of course. And. It, I went into it with an open mind. I did. I specifically I saw a little bit of people saying, eh, it's kind of mediocre. And I went into it um, just curious. And it has an amazing fucking cast. Yeah. Was, so give me give me a scale of one to 10. Of my appreciation of it? Yes. Let me f- save the review for the end. Oh, oh, oh no, there's but, more intro? I'm no, sorry. No, but it, it I started. I would some context to the intro if I knew that ahead of time. But you don't have to answer any questions I give you. No, that's not what this is. Historically, you're the one who you're the one who asked the questions, not me. <laughs> I haven't I mean, been to Europe either. I don't mean I don't mean to step I don't mean to step into your shit. I forgot you were the executive producer. Yes. Go ahead. No, Go but ahead. it it started like the kind of movie that I love. I love a disaster movie, and I love a I love a scientist's need to warn everyone about about a thing. And it's pretty early on. There was like one clip of there was just like one like animation of something in space that was like totally wrong that I, I noticed. And I was like, Oh, wait a minute. This is not a serious movie. This is not a serious disaster movie. This uh, is a comedy, but the, and it was at the beginning, it starts off like any sort of disaster movie where someone, something is discovered and we need to activate all of humanity to work on this. And it, and it was by the time I realized that, Oh, wait, this is, this is a great satire on the current situation and a, and a reflection on, fucking COVID and global warming and 
right. uh, everything where where these these scientists had this real data that they took to nasa and nasa was like oh my god we have to show this to the president and they go and they show it to the president and the president played perfectly as a female trump by meryl streep oh really uh, is a says okay i understand that the planet only has six more months to live but if we like act on this right now it's going to hurt my it's going to it's going to hurt the midterms and so we can't so i think we need to keep quiet on this right now and then the scientists are frustrated, obviously. And so they like reach out to media TV stations and they get booked on a TV show that's like the Today Show. And the Tyler Perry and yeah, Kate Blanchett. Yes. And the and they and the anchors are more concerned about this like celebrity breakup that's going on than about the destruction of the whole fucking planet. Sure. And, and she loses it's just, it. Jennifer Lawrence's character yeah, loses it, right? And it's just so perfect. It's a perfect allegory for our current world uh-huh. of clicks are more important than surviving death and clicks are more important than deaths. Right. Yeah. For me, yes, for sure. Yes. And so that's, the number you know, of clicks, the number of clicks is more important than the number of deaths. Correct. Yes. The, the COVID that's where we are. And so anyway, I, I really enjoyed it. I think it was very clever. And the reason I asked you if you had seen idiocracy is because this is the new idiocracy. Right, this is right, a shining right. a light on how fucking stupid, stupid we all are right and right. it's not even like idiocracy was like if we take our current situation and we go forward 20 years into fucking 2020 or whatever it was how stupid will people be and but this was like a reflection on just how stupid we are now and how if look our best scientists have come and said global warming is a catastrophe and covid is a catastrophe and the public is just i don't know i bet i could turn to it's another catastrophe TV, for you man i could turn to another tv station and see something else so meh and well, uh, just how it feels, it really feels that we are so ill-equipped to deal with right. any global yes. disaster. But, so now your score, so, scale of one to 10. I, so it lost, it, it got, what I, I just looked it up in the box office, it got 10% of what it cost. So yeah, which is why loser. Leonard DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence went on a full scale ads to explain about the movie. I don't know yeah. if you've seen this. It's the most, no, I I've never seen anything like it. But it's, you, they're actually I, it's like a commercial for the movie. I think it's going to earn more in the future as it becomes a cult classic in the same way right. that that right. idiocracy or. Uh, and, but but but, but I say whatever. to you, we still have no score. Yes, yes, we, we no don't. Score. We are we out are waiting 10. patiently. Yes, out of, out of okay. ten, you can reestablish <laughs> the high end. I know it's surprising that the high end of the scoring is ten, but try to wrap your head around it as you consider. I know I have a number in my head of what you will say. And I am going to uh, take this piece of paper and I'm going to write it. It's now written. And I want you to go ahead and give your score. So there's this podcast that I listened to where on the very first, where, where like they rate products and on the very first episode, they misspoke and they said, I get this. They meant to say seven out of 10 or something, but they said seven out of a hundred. <laughs> and the other host pick, picked up on the picked up on the initial error and like also said, "Oh, well, I give it a seven point five out of hundred. And ever fucking since then, they give their ten point rating scale, but then they say out of hundred, just just to mock their previous. So your number is, I give this a nine. That's your answer was snowman. Eight. 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 Yeah. No, yeah. It's, and, I think it's. And, I think on future watching, it's going to get even better because well, I think it's going to. It's going to prove. I think it's going to prove. No, I mean, part of my nine is taking into account the future. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think that means what you're really were saying is that right, right now in time it's an eight that you think it'll earn to a nine. No, that's what you just said. It and, and let me tell you this. I know when you said nine that you said it because I said you were going to say eight. No, I didn't. You knew damn, didn't, you knew damn didn't well show me. I was going to say eight. No, no I, I didn't have to show you. You knew I was going to say eight. That's why you said nine, because you wanted... If I can read you, why don't you read me so well that you no, could... No, I did read My you actual well. answer. Because you, your actual answer was eight, and you lied, <laughs> and you said fucking nine. That's what you did. Here. That's yes. what you did. You're it, busted. It, so I think we're going to look back on this movie as as prophetic. Prophetic? Prophetic. More like a six. Prophetic. Is that a word? I got two things. I got two things to say. Number one, listen to this beautiful sound. I'm trying. Put some muscle in Anchor, here. steam beer, Anchor Brewing Company since 1896. Mm-hmm. Well mm-hmm, done. Baby. Mm-hmm, and, baby. Uh, number two, 
and you're not going to like this, yeah. but I got to go piss. And so you're going to have to edit out this pause. All right. I'll say, man. Pissing Dennis, pissing Dennis, pissing Dennis in the bathroom. When will he be back? We don't know, but I guess we will wait here all alone. So listeners, uh, this don't look up movie, man. It, um, you got to try it out and you got to go to it with a, this is satire mindset. And I think you will be rewarded. The, the acting is obviously phenomenal, but it's good satire reflects so strongly on our current situation that it's painful to watch or read or whatever. Like the best onion articles are so like it hurts to read how accurate they are at mocking us. And to be honest, the ones that more closely mock who I perceive my personality to be are the better ones. The ones that are mocking other people, man, I don't care so much, but we will await the return of our co-host. Sorry, but she's back. Hey, the fact that we made it through 139 episodes of basically drinking for an hour and no one has had to go to the bathroom yet is... uh, This has happened once before. We try not to talk about that incident. I lied about it. (laughs) Would 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 you rather that I make you an honest man? When you had the stain on your pants that day was... Oh my God. It was bad, man. It was bad, man. Bad man. So, how did everything come out all right? <laughs> That's pretty stupid. That's pretty fucking infantile. Low this brow. I we were talking. I was while you were gone. I was talking about how important it is that like satire reflect upon society's woes. Well, and now I riffed. thought I would bring. Now I thought I would bring it back down to. Uh, you riffed when I was gone. Hey, we could try that sometime. But yeah, let's just take turns. Up, set this up ahead of time. That if one of us just suddenly puts the headphones down and walks away, yeah. that the other one has no choice but to riff the entire time until the person comes back. That's basically what we do. You know, anyway. we just take turns riffing. <laughs> Although there's a, a lot of talk over future Eric editing this will complain about. I meant to send you pictures. And, hey, I was and talking. I'm it sure. doesn't matter. It was an interesting. I was outside and I looked at the Ooh. caved in roof of my tent garage. And it said out loud, as I do when I'm out there thinking, if I don't take a picture of this now, I'll forget. And I didn't, and I did. And then I fixed it by putting a... You didn't take a picture, and you did forget? Yeah, you didn't forget, and you did take a picture? No, you were right the first time. That was logical. I don't know why you're going the other direction. Okay. Clearly, inaction is your superpower. Yes. Yes. But I'm glad it's finally recognized as such. But I had the story of me doing the, the dumpster diving at Lowe's where they yes. discard stuff that's incredibly Your valuable. Door. And in the case of this, there was this rubberized tarp that had uh, one rip in it. And for whatever reason, it was discarded. And I, I took it and, and spray washed it and cleaned it, and et cetera. Mostly it was filthy and disgusting because they had used it to cover a semi-diesel tractor trailer, what would call the trailer part of it, right. with something that was just disgusting. And so I cleaned it. And I said to myself, so I wonder if that would work. So I go in the garage, it's colder than hell, snowy, snowing. And over the course of the day that this happened, the day before this happened, the day it happened the next day, we got 14 inches of snow. Holy crap. So that's a, a bit of a drop, but not nothing extraordinary from my experience, but nonetheless to deal with. And with the high winds explains why the roof ripped. So I laid the tarp out and I said, I'll be damned. I need 19, I need 19 feet for the disc for the length and 20 would be better. And I need uh, 14 feet for the width and it measured 19 by 14. So I, I rolled it up. I rolled it up and carried it painstakingly, very heavy, rolled it up and uh, put it in the back of my pickup truck and folded it into thirds so that it fit in the pickup truck. 14 okay, feet hold on, hold on. I, w- I want to visualize this. You're you pulled into the lows behind the lows where there's a dumpster there. And you've picked up this super filthy, greasy rubber tarp thing that is huge and heavy. And you're, you've rolled it up and you're shoving it into your vehicle. It's clean now. It's clean now. But, but at the time of the theft borrowing, it, it was filthy. 
the the uh, restoration, the rejuvenation, uh, the saving, recover, from, foster from, home. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, that tarp would be in a dump in a dump somewhere. You want to take a guess how long it would be there before it totally deteriorated? Since it's made seventeen thousand years. Yeah. Right. So now it can be over your so thing for fourteen feet thousand. wide. So now it's a roll, roll, which is fourteen feet burrito. long. Yep. 15, 14 feet long, fifteen feet because it wasn't quite straight, hmm. and weighed like heavy. One man could lift it on his shoulders is what turned out to be the case. So I centered it uh, a widthwise in the back of my pickup truck yep. so that the center of the truck was in the center of the back of the pickup truck. And then I folded it into thirds, a third in the truck, a third folded over, a third folded over. And I backed into the frame of the tent garage, Yes, made the flapping canvas more or less even, flapping along the sides and boosted from the back of my truck at that elevation, mm-hmm. this huge rolled up cigar of a tarp. Over the like top in blizzard of the frame, conditions with like over the, the snow the blowing around. Snow yep. blowing, snow blowing, everything, it, you know, cold. And Blow unrolled snowing. it over the frame with two feet overhanging either side. So it stayed in place. And when you I got to first. the edge of it, when I got to the edge of it, unrolled it with the back edge being even where it needed to be to the back wall and unrolled it that this is a, a tent shaped like a house. So it's got a steeple, right? Mm-hmm. And so unrolled it and rolled and rolled. When I got to the front, because the tarp was wrinkled, as it would be, right. it you was about it. a foot and a half short. Uh, and when I tried to tug on it over the course of the frame, of course, it didn't budge. Don't tug on your tarp. I moved the entire frame before I could move the tarp. Uh, and so I thought, why don't you think an Egyptian... Do, 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 do. And I thought, ah, resistant. okay. So I took uh, uh, some rope that I had in my truck. And, you killed and the at the uh, 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock of the tarp on the frame, I used the rivets and I tied a piece of rope. And that rope was about 15 feet long, both of them, each of them 15 feet long. Yeah. I joined them to a rope that was 8 feet long. And then I tied the end of the eight foot long rope onto the back of my pickup truck and moved forward ever so slowly. Mm. And then I moved like an Egyptian. Do, 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 bah, 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 bah. Pulling and forward with your truck. Yes. Pulled forward, got to the exact like the Egyptians edge. Did. That's how they the moved the pyramids, by the way. You were the little four cylinder Toyota. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. They had them there. These were a smart people. They were ahead of their time. Of Those Toyota they Hiluxes four, are all over the middle. Of course, they had a four-wheel drive uh, Toyota truck ready to pull. Right. And then, before I did that, I bungeed the back of the top to was the various... Bungee was the tool of the day uh, recently. Uh, the, the, the bungee is not the tool of the day. I will get to the tool of the day. Okay, and you can ahead. guess. I'll, I'll give you a chance to guess. And so they were bungeed at the back. And so as I pulled, the bungees in the back stretched. As the and do. then with the rope taut, I went into the garage yes. and pulled out an eight-foot step ladder, propped it in between the vulcrum of the two ropes, yes, and bungeed the front. And those ropes were so tight that you could play them like a fucking guitar. Mm. Bam, bang, bam. Thong, thong, thong. And nice. then I took out my trusty little knife. I got to show you because it's with me all the time. Tool it's a present day. for my brother. Tool of the day. That's a sexy little jackknife you got there. Mm. Cut more than cheese with that. Who cut the, cut the cheese, man? Mm. Who cut the cheese? So, so you cut, the front. Yeah. Then I cut the ropes. And I got to tell you, the frame sprung backwards. And the gap, which after I pulled the tarp forward with the truck, was down to four inches. Yep. When I cut the ropes, the gap completely disappeared. Boom. Gap closed. 19-foot frame, 19-foot tarp, bungeed. Took the rope, rolled it in the back. Rolled it in the back. Saying, man, I love it when a good plan comes together. I just love it. So now you have a roof over your tent garage garage thing. Tent garage, new roof. Covered with snow and ice, as it turns out. Ah, that's always the best part. So nice. And it's all bungee. And hold it down. I took a bungee, took a half of the cinder block, put a bungee through the hole in the cinder block, connected to another bungee, and hooked that bungee to the middle of the tarp on the side so that would hold it down. You, you are the bungee master. 
I am the bungee master. But what is your guess as the tool of the day? It's not that gorgeous knife? No. And it can't be the bungee because that was already featured in our previous award ceremony. I got a, not the ladder. I think the truck that, that helped pull everything taut. Nope. Or the rope. Bang, 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 because bang. The, the bang, rope, bang. rope is... Uh, more, more to the point, however. The fulcrum rope. Fuck me. <laughs> the fulc, fulc, fulcrum rope? The fulcrum rope. I know what a do fulcrum a quick, is. Do a, do a quick search. Come on, we got a minute. That's I know what a fulcrum is, to, but fulcrum but rope. It. If you know it, then give me the definition before you look it up. Give me okay. the definition. Without looking it up, uh, a fulcrum is the part where where a lever is it's the point where a lever pivots on. Okay, let's see what it says. So you want me to look up fulcrum rope? No, that won't come up. It might, but I doubt it. I know what fulc- I just told you what fulcrum is. I don't need to look this up. Okay. Uh, the support about which a lever turns. Oh, that sounds familiar. Like I just said it. What that proves is that it's ridiculous for me to call it the fulcrum rope. <laughs> because that's not... <laughs> that Maybe work. you meant a pulley. Was it uh, a place no, where a rope was... No, I, you know what? I made it more complicated than it needed to be. The answer is the rope. You okay, were right. Well. The tool of the day is the rope. Because this is my definition. I could have got by... With any of the other stuff, I could have, if I didn't have bungees, what would I have used instead? What's the answer? Rope. Oh, yeah. Therefore, what's the most important tool of the day? Rope. Rope. Yes. The hangman's R-O-P-E. Uh, R-O-P-E. weapon. It's got the best of me. Rope. R O P R O P E. You're one dope with a rope. Don't, don't bring that shit in front of me. The dope with the rope. Rope right. a dope. Well, you're, reminds you're, me, you're, reminds you're, me of Manila. You're the rope pope. I had a lot of hope in that rope. And it turns out I had it figured out. I knew the scope. <laughs> I could barely cope. And when I went home, I was so happy I didn't run. I loped. <laughs> I ain't no. Well done. When it was done, I was, I had nothing to do. So I moped. Yeah. You can't say nope to something like that. You can't. You can't. Right. You know what you say? So I want to I want to talk a little bit about about some some potentials for your involvement in my talent show. We can do that on the if, air if you'd like. Sure. You are you are in fact one of my two choices. Few musician. I wisely chose Don as my other accompaniment. Why I, Phil didn't occur to you ahead of me? Uh, I don't understand, but whatever. But you don't know because and that's because you have no idea what I'm thinking. Oh, well, and I, when I, really I tell do. you what I tell you when I'm thinking, you realize why Don is my choice for musician and you're my choice for dance. Ah, oh, the dance. I remember that. Yes. And thank you again for the uh, wonderful Christmas present. I ah, am almost yes. through. I'm almost through. We need to talk about that. Page the eight later. Hmm. The, eight, the I'm at page about, I don't know, 600. I stormed through it. It's hard to put it down. But I do have to go to the chiropractor because my shoulders are hurting from trying to prop it up on a pillow when I read it while I'm lying in bed at night because it is about the heaviest book since Fire and Ice that I've held in front of me. I tried to read Fine. it. It's ridiculously thick. Now I feel bad about giving you a gift. Oh, no. Whatever. <laughs> but this is what's important. I get a kickback from your story, though. So is that nice. in the dedication, it has two quotes. Three quotes. Two are sourced. And the third one is not sourced. And as it turns out, the source is the book itself. And nice. what the dedication is, says is, dancing is life. And that's why I thought of you. So there's... I actually had indicated to the group that I've got a couple of ideas in mind and it might be a medley, but since no one is listening to this, who will attend our event, know that that's just my sly way of actually having opportunity for two numbers. We're talking about like tap or like uh, no, first ballroom one, or the first one is, or... from, is from, let's see, what's the name of the movie? Dirty Dancing. No, what's the name of the movie? Huh? What's the second one? Ah, uh, yes. As we know is one of your... Yes. It's and deep in your rep- rep- repertoire. The, the second one, which is the of the two, more or less the finale, given the way that it goes, you could imagine then yes. why I would need a piano player and not a guitar player. Okay. For Mac the Knife and why I would want to dance. Yes. There you go. I, I, and here's the only thing you need to do is I want you to, and as you would probably do this anyway, I want you to make sure you pack uh, long underwear and long sleeved undergarment as you do because it's it cold there fucking and true. that's matching and of course it's probably black or gray but probably yeah. black yeah. and black socks 
and uh, I will help you with the choreography uh, and the rest. And I, mean, I think you're dancing. Okay. And at this point, for at least the first part of it, you have no you have no oral requirements, no oral response. I need to shut the fuck verbal. up. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. Maybe because you will be exuberant in your dancing, there will be grunting, there will be sweating. Oh. We'll need a larger room. We may need to do this in the lobby, as it turns out. I think that makes sense. Out. Listen, we've, we've done worse things in the, the prize, lobby. If you're going to win the prize, you got to plan ahead. You got to stage it. You don't, you know, go this. Oh, you know, I'm going to play the guitar. I'm going to play all around the watchtower. <laughs> no, we've we have desecrated lobbies in Myrtle Beach. We so. have. I may need to because I'm the uh, master of ceremonies for. In Always. perpetuity, one would assume I'm also the master of ceremonies for this, and as, as I would expect. And uh, I then have a lot to say about the venue. And also, I'm a condo captain, one of three. Yes. Therefore, besides the committee, who's all powerful, we, we he, he can veto anything that we would decide. But otherwise, no, his decisions are final. His, all decisions are final. Yes. But anyway, I'll, I've got to get, I've got to give you some more information on, on the first tune, but come back tonight. So we have one more recording before. I fly, I think. Just we have one more before I'm unavailable because I'm driving. You right. have you might have two. Yeah, have I'm but I don't. Yeah, okay. In that case, I don't. so we will see you in here next week and then maybe some sort of hiatus and then maybe an in-person oh recording. A live. Hey. We did that one time and it's up, it's available for Patreon subscribers at patreon.com slash happy hour. Right. But not that appealing apparently. We could we could go live at the counter. And try to work through it with the fact that everybody's there saying what they say because it'd be no, too loud. No, yeah, you can. Cacophony. Cacophony. That's, that's very, <laughs> it's very Midwestern of you. Cacophony. Cacophony. Hey, we should drink some coffee before the cacophony so that we've got some caffeine. Let me introduce you to my daughter, Cacophony. <laughs> Hello, Cacophony. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I feel a little jazzed up. I'm fine. Oh, and thank you, by the way, the video, the one one legged golfer. That was inspiring. So let me give you let me give you some extra information on that. That guy works at the sporting goods store where I just had my clubs regrip. Oh, really? Like uh, the closest sporting goods store where they will regrip clubs is in that is in the city where he lives. And I just learned that he works at that particular store. That's crazy. I did not see him because I think I would have noticed if it was him. But yeah, he's freaking amazing. And I don't know what his handicap is, but um, he's probably- No pun golfer. intended. No pun oh, intended. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, God. That's so good. He has a handicap of one leg. Yes. On the dog legs. Hey. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, for those that, that haven't followed, the, there's this one-legged well, there's this one -legged golfer that lives in, in a nearby city to me that is friends with John Rahm, who lives in another nearby city to me on the other side of me. And they know each other from youth just around. But uh, this one-legged golfer is like a scratch freaking golfer and has this amazing balance. And I will put a video of him in the show notes. He's uh, and, fantastic. And just really inspiring. Right. Just to, really inspiring. To be uh, like, there's another famous kid, although I, I, he's probably fairly older now, but there's this kid that, on Instagram that has one arm and is a golfer. And he got really famous on social media and has met all of the pros and stuff. And they all congratulate him on being amazing. But yeah, that's it. It's inspiring to see people that have such a disability go on to be better than those of us that, that don't. And in one sense, because of their motivation, they have a leg up on us. Yeah, just the one though. Although the challenge is that all the dog legs play like their dog leg right. Right. But, you know, yeah, so whatever. Hey, my, money, my, he saves uh, money on, on golf shoes, though, I guess. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> he can't switch. He can't switch from right he, to left. He needs a he friend get, he with the same size right foot. <laughs> no. he, he needs a friend missing his left leg. And then they would save so much money. It might be he, worth it to cut your left leg he's off. He's probably endorsed by, by like, Foot Joy by now. <laughs> my friend, Sirenara. Sirenara for you. We'll see you next week on Happy Hour. <laughs> that's terrible. Okay, that's it for episode number 140. That's 140. You can find the show notes at happyhour.fm slash 140. And it's just going to be one more episode until Dennis and I are in the same place together. I look forward to that very, very much and take care of yourselves and we'll see you next week.